So anytime you create a risk ID or a function or you add a function to a risk ID, okay, you need to generate the rules. Okay, that's a very important step. Even when you in the beginning, right, when you load your global rule set. So if you want to activate or you know those rule sets, you need to generate them. So the generation of rule sets can be done in two two places. Okay, one in uh, using the access control, the other is using uh, the ARA. Yeah, sorry, uh, the SPRO transaction code. So you can now select you know to generate the rules. You can select the only ones that you want to generate. Uh, the uh, risk IDs okay or you can go and select everything and then generate it okay so generation this takes a lot of time so like I said there are two places where you can generate the rules one in the access control itself and then you can also go to SPRO let me give in begin from the start you know go to SPRO and then go to reference IMG, governance risk and compliance, access control. Now this is specific to access risk analysis. Okay, so go to access risk analysis and the rule sets are related to SOD rules. So right, you go to expand SOD rules and then you have generate SOD rule sets. So when you execute it, there are two things you can do. You can put an asterisk here and generate everything. Or if there is a pattern that you have used for creating your custom rule sets, risk IDs, right? Then you can use the custom, uh, you know, the naming pattern that you have create that you have used for creating your risk IDs. Okay, so I have two patterns here, right? ZS, SEC and ZSP. So if I want to generate only these, then I will use these two patterns when I want to generate in the in SAP GRC system. Or you can just click on here. Let's see what happens this time. And uh, let's say background. Okay, so when you do that, now you see in this case you got all the risks that you selected okay so let's say I'll say ZSP risks and then schedule it immediately and schedule the background job rule generation job is successfully scheduled right now how do you see what is happening with this job right so you close this and you go to your uh, access control and uh, in access management work center you will have an option for background jobs under scheduling so click on background jobs and if you see this is the risk that you created and it is still active okay so if you refresh it takes time because it has to generate what this job is not doing is it is generating risk IDs unique risk IDs depending on how many transaction codes and you know, combinations you have in each of the conflicting functions so it goes one to one okay one against many from one function to the next the second one it does a one to many uh, uh, risk IDs generation. Okay, and those risk IDs are unique. And uh, when you run the risk analysis report, you will find those risk IDs in the report also. So let's go and refresh. So, like I said, right, you can also go and then go, you can do the same activity if that is your preference. You can come here and do an asterisk uh, in SPRO or you can simply say ZSCC, the pattern that you, the 
that you want to generate okay so one of the two ways you can do both ways so let us go back to and see if that gets finished now this is going to take time okay so let's see and um, see how long it takes so let's go and uh, so I'll pause the video for a few minutes so let's go and check if this job is finished okay so this job is finished okay so which means now when you run the risk analysis reports uh, you will see these conflicts okay so let's go and try to run a user level uh, risk analysis report and see if it uh, works okay so I'm going to just pick the rule set okay that we have selected and let's see what happens with this so the idea here is to check whether the rule sets the risk IDs that we created show up or not in the report okay along with because we selected only the rule set that we created let's see if that works let us do one thing you know let us cancel this uh, we don't want okay it's not stopping let's see what happens because it's going against uh, the root conflict like for all the user IDs and we also did not mention the system right so that's a mistake we made so let's go back close this let's do it again and let's filter it so let's now filter this with our uh, system okay and then we will also filter it with our uh, let's say S4 because this is S4 HANA system let's go and let's filter it by user ID also and then check with our custom rule set first okay and if you want to add the global also you can add the global along when you click on the plus sign you can include global also in the result in the report okay click on execute in the run in the foreground and if you see here now the risk IDs that we created right those are showing up and every risk ID has a unique uh, every combination of the risk right between the transaction codes from the two functions it has a unique uh, rule ID so these rule IDs these unique rule IDs are generated by uh, when you generate the uh, risk IDs okay in the, during the generation step so this is basically uh, individual rules you know, that you know they are generated by creating uh, conflicting t-code combinations from the uh, functions that you have that are part of your risk ID okay that is one thing you need to remember uh, now there are certain things that you can see here right you can see the summary report right this is a summary report so if you click on detail report it is going to tell you the user ID the risk ID and if you see what are the from the two functions what are the conflicting transaction codes okay the combination that is what it basically gives you and that is how this rule IDs are 
generated. Now in this case, it also shows you the rows from where these combinations are coming. Okay, uh, these conflicts are coming basically. All right, let's go to check management summary. It just gives you the user ID and the risk ID, okay, for management purposes, a very high level uh, rep uh, report. Executive summary, it just gives you, okay, the risk ID and how many conflicts uh, are there for each or that user, okay, we have between each, uh, each risk ID. So there are different levels of uh, reports that you get uh, when you run the risk analysis reports. So let's close this. So you can also, you know, have a business view and the remediation view, for example. And let's check the remediation view because one of the configuration steps that we did was uh, activating three O data services which were related to remediation view. One of them was related to remediation view, right? So let's see if remediation view works. So select remediation view and click on run in foreground. So you see now you see if that O data service was not activated, right? So this, this you won't get this type of report. You know, you get a blank screen. So there are a couple of things that you need to understand in remediation view. So you have the user ID, the risk IDs, risks and the risk levels, how many violations for each risk and the rule ID that were generated for the risk, okay, individual unique IDs. And here you can do two things, right? You can remediate by mitigating the risk, okay? On a risk level, you can remediate, okay? And uh, rule ID, you can also remediate or mitigate uh, on the rule ID level also, okay? That is basically the combination. But when it comes to role, okay, there is only one. There is no mitigation. You can only uh, remediate, meaning you can only remove one of the roles to uh, remove that conflict, SOD. And when you click on other information or any of these items, right, risk or uh, rule ID or uh, rule name, you basically get the details of that particular element, okay? So when you click on the role, you see, you see what transaction codes are there in that particular role in ZBS, in the BS04. When I click on BS12, you will get the list of uh, the transaction codes in that role. Also, if you scroll down to the bottom, it will also give you the authorizations that are part of that role. Okay. Now, when you click on rule ID, you basically get the same thing, okay? Rule actions, the combination for which this was created, right? At 31, and let's see if at 34, right? So when you see, now you have a different one, I think. What was this? SC01 was 34 and This is 43. Okay, so SC01 from one function conflicting with two transaction codes which are in the other which are in the other function. That's how the combination is done and then a rule a unique rule ID is created. But along with this combination, you also see the authorization, the permission level values for each of the uh, transaction codes or actions that are conflicting. And when you click on risk, you basically get the risk, risk, level, uh, risk information, okay? So risk ID, right? And then what type of risk it is, what business process it is, 
risk level and the two business functions that are part of this risk. So you, if you remember, this is what makes up your uh, risk ID when you defined the risk. This is what you had provided information. And if you, the other thing that you need to know here, look at here is the user ID and the user description. Okay, that is from whom we ran this. Okay, so these are, this is risk remediation view. Similarly, if you look at business view, Uh, once we are done, we'll go this with this. We'll go back to remediation view because there's one more thing that you need to note. Okay, so business view pretty much looks like your. Uh, technical view, right? Except that you don't have uh, what you don't have here is the role names. Basically, you have the business processes here, okay? But you don't have the uh, what you call the role names here. When it, when you compare this with uh, uh, what was that other one? Technical view and uh, then you have Oh, you need to go and do the detailed one also, then you will find this here. So you have a lot of, lot more details, okay, in a business view. Yeah. Okay, so you check this out with, you know, when you try give your own, create your own risk IDs and functions and all, you can check this out reports in detail. Uh, the one thing that you need to, I forgot to mention in remediation view, when you run this, this yellow triangle, that orange triangle that you get, it says role error, right? Now you get this error because these roles are not part of your BRM repository, okay? So that is why, you know, this is this shows as the error and then it is it does not show how you can uh, remediate or mitigate this item on the role name. Okay, so when this is active, when this role, particular role is in uh, BRM repository, instead of this orange triangle, you will get something like this, this wheel uh, icon and then you, you will have only one option there. Instead of mit assign mitigation, you will it will just say remediate. Okay, so that is so you need to note this. All right, so this is how this ARA is set up, and now because you have created the your risk and you know risk IDs and functions and all, now whenever you create. Uh, submit a user request form or want to create a role with the user IDs, you know, sorry, the transaction codes from the any of these functions, right? Uh, or the GRC system can gives you a you know, feature where you can do a risk analysis report before, you, you know, to see if, if there are any conflicts in what you're doing, you know, if you so this is the, this ARA is the heart of, I would say, entire GRC system, okay? Because every other module like AM, BRM and ARA, at some point or other, it comes to and, you know, needs the information, the data, the setup that you do in ARA. And that is what we covered in our first introduction video, right? We spoke about how each of these form of modules are connected with each other. Okay, all right. So once the, after this risks are set up, you know, uh, risk IDs are set up and we also assign the risk owners, right? Now we can go and check how to uh, mitigate those risks, right? So we have to create mitigating controls and uh, next we'll see how to go about doing that.